Yo, welcome to the show. I don't have a name for the show, but you know, that ain't gonna never stop the show from going on. But hey, got my boy Quez in the building, man. Family. What's good? My old brother. Back at it again. My dog. So yeah, man, how you doing? How you really doing? Vibing, man. Vibing. You vibing? Yeah. Everything going smooth? Fresh off the nap, man. I'm trying to see what the night got. Plan for us. We out here in the O. Cup. Yeah. Can't yeah. So let's get straight to it, man. So so for those who don't know, what's your story, man? Where you from? You know what I'm saying? How you got to where you at today? You know. So yeah, from Dauphin, Alabama. I'm born and raised. Uh class of twenty thirteen. Uh went to Florida State. Former professional athlete, turned entrepreneur. Um Getting into a whole lot of business stuff, a whole lot of betterment, just building some fo- solid foundation, shit like that. What was your process like getting to getting to Florida State, and how? And you also played basketball too, mm-hmm. so like, how was that? How was that? How was your college experience as an athlete? Man, just growing up, I always thought I was a hooper. Yeah. Um, I feel like I kind of matured quicker than a lot of my peers is in middle school. I was dunking in sixth grade, uh, five, 11 in sixth grade. I don't think I grew an inch since, since sixth, seventh grade. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just having that love for ball and just growing up in the house, four or five brothers, we all in the house competing competitive every day. Um, they all played football, shit, through high school. Um, I played both, really, uh, but Know, started getting recruited by Florida State as a sophomore in high school mm-hmm. for basketball. And it's crazy how it worked out because I was so stuck on basketball that I didn't even want to – I was getting recruited by other colleges, like football, D1 offers, but I'm like, man, it's only two schools that I even think about going to play football, and that was Florida State and um, Alabama. So, said sophomore year of high school, I ended up coming on an unofficial um, visit to Florida State with the basketball team and they ended up taking us, you know how they take the recruits to the football games, shit like that. Um, Sorry, I, I don't know. I didn't get okay, a yeah. chance to experience that. Everybody got different <laughs> stories, man, but we still what we nah, is. I'm, Everybody I'm, great. We said we uh went and I remember Greg Reed, man, Seminole legend. Mm-hmm. Uh, electric punt returner. Shout out to Greg. Shout out to Greg, man. I remember him coming out. It was just something like the way he just – he was really like a performer, man. If you go back and like watch the way that man played, like legendary, he had to had the whole stadium like in the palm of his hand, literally. So boom, he run out doing warm ups, and the nigga had the, uh, I mean, he had like the the cream Seminole gloves on, had like the had the Seminole head in the middle, and that nigga like held his hand up, held the five up, like catching punts, and literally the whole this warm ups whole stadium rocking, right. Rocking. I think this was like Oklahoma was number five. We was it was number one. We was number five at the time. Was it that uh, night game? It was a night game. It was probably like twenty eleven. Yeah. Twenty twelve, boy. And I'm yeah. like, man, if I had to, I gotta go to Florida State. I was so yeah. Um, fast forward, man. I ended up going through high school. I think I picked up that Florida State offer probably junior year. Junior year, uh High school and said I committed, was committed ever since. Um, got there, got to campus, won the natty, um, freshman year, and it's crazy. Two days after we won the national championship, Coach Hamilton from the basketball team had them, uh, cause mind you, they was recruiting me like heavy, but you know, I was a, I wasn't like nationally ranked or nothing like that. I was just, you know, killing high school, going to their camps, killing it. Um, it's crazy. They end up calling Jimbo. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you gonna let Marquez come up for the basketball team? Um, when our point guards ineligible for the year, we need a guard. Um, just two days later, after the championship game, I'm in the gym, right. basketball practice, getting ready, like, for it. getting ready for it. You know, it's crazy. Like, I ain't never really shared this with you or nothing, but like, I think you. You going to go play basketball helped me out my spring coming in because even though I was a walk-on and I was like the last dude on the roster, it's like 
whatever they needed an extra you know what I'm saying? Right, like so you was able to show you I what think, you could do. Yeah, yeah, so appreciate you for letting me get in those That's reps, crazy. Bro. Yeah, I ain't never, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always thought about that. But, uh, That's crazy. so you ended up going to Florida State and you, you go, you go on your visit. Now, do you already got this Alabama ta- tattoo on you before or after the visit? Man, I <laughs> think, because you remember, you know, uh, I'm from, I'm an Alabama kid. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's this whole thing about, you know, you can go to Auburn. If you were top, because I was the number one corner in the state coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I was, like, top five as far as, like, players overall. And we had some good players uh, come out. Uh, I think Jeremy Johnson came out, went to Auburn. Um, man, it's, I forgot my dog name. It's late. Uh, he played for the – played safety. Jonathan Ford mm-hmm. played safety for the ja- uh, Jacksonville. We all came out together. Really talented class, but – um, you know, said, damn, I forgot. What the fuck? I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so for the people that don't know, for the people that don't know, so we used to make fun of you because you was a Florida State guy, but you oh, had an yeah. Alabama tattoo. I'm tripping. Yeah. And so boom. So you know, Pruitt was the Pruitt was the uh, was the coordinator. <laughs> At Alabama at the time, yeah. the corners back coach. So you know, I'm going back and forth, you know, between you know, Alabama, Auburn, uh, not Alabama, Auburn, Alabama, Florida State. You know, Coach Dawson, Coach Dawson from Dalton, right? Uh, alumni of my high school. Uh, we only like, we want to only like five people to get drafted in the whole high school history, mm-hmm. like a four or five, a forty or fifty year history. But um, shit, just. Being an Alabama kid, man, and being a fan, um, I think when I went on my visit and the way they had it set up, man, I think I came back and got a tattoo. Like the the like the day I got back after my after like an unofficial, you know, they offered me. Mm-hmm. Saban had offered me like my junior year. He did, um, but they wouldn't let me commit. It was weird, like how they was doing shit. Then it was like. They was offering you, but they wanted to see how you develop. Yeah. So they could hand pick like, who they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said, I was sold, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But when Pruitt flipped and like, I called to commit to him, and he was like, man, don't don't commit. Just wait like a week or so. The whole time, he working on the Florida State. Florida State deal. Working on the Florida State, State, State deal. And boom, he was like, man, I'm going to sign you. Um, Jalen Ramsey and Nate Andrews, you know, Nate from Alabama too. Mm-hmm. And I already knew who Nate was because yeah. I had him play Nate in high school. Our senior year, Nate went off for like eight tugs. Like, right. From Going the quarterback crazy. position, just straight running. Like Going he was crazy. like that. Yeah. But, um, that's how I went, man. That's how I got out of Alabama. Maybe threw me a little something on the side. You never know. But. <laughs> so, uh, so so we at state, you know what I'm saying? You it's winning that? Hell no, bro. It don't even matter. Oh, that's it. Oh, no. oh yeah, for sure. Shout out to them. Get that money. So you go to Florida State. You win a natty. You know what I'm saying? A couple years after that, you leave for the draft. What was what was like? What was your path to the draft like? And what was what was uh your thought process? And what was your experience like once you got into the NFL? We can start with just the process. I think kind of like what you said, just opportunity. Um, you know, when I got to school, like, I think it took a little time. Like, I didn't come in one of them super focused kids. Like, I literally came in as a freshman. You know, I'm behind a, some All-Americans, good players, you know. Um, I'm part of We doing what we doing, man. I don't think I really took it serious until I kind of saw, like, the guys – in that DB room, you know, them really get their chance mm-hmm. to go to the next level, really. And me feeling like, you know, because uh, at the time when I came in, we think we had Jordan, we had T. Brooks, Darby, PJ, Jalen. Um, T. Hunt was in there. Mm-hmm. Um, this one, he was healthy, so T. Hunt was a dog then. Um, just seeing them guys away, you know, 
and they was competing in the notoriety and you know just the opportunity they was getting to you know change their lives for their family so i think i didn't really take it serious like set my goal like hey I'm fin- i want to go to the league until um darby and pj love because you know we, me and pj was roommates um darby was over there all the time like we had you know i kind of looked up to them as like big bros and just seeing the success that they was having um on and off the field just kind of wanted to emulate that and then you know it was one significant i've told Jalen this before it was one significant conversation uh, he called me on it from the team one time and i don't know no trying to belittle me or mm-hmm. no negative shit, but he just you know we came in together you know the type of person he is he got a a certain standard for himself if you playing with him he wants you to you know have a certain standard about yourself right have a certain level of play but he was like man you gotta you gotta come with it you gotta come with it you know we came in together i ain't doing what i'm supposed to do i ain't taking it taking taking shit serious you know if you want to help the team and help yourself and you take it serious and you know i feel like that conversation after that him calling me out from in front of the coaches in front of the peers this is doing camp Mm-hmm. Um, training camp going into the season um, him doing that that really helped that helped the situation and just my whole mindset focus of what I was trying to just kind of shifted the culture man for me and just you know wanting to be not wanting to be the eye man out I guess yeah for real so yeah that's really my that's my that's my process for yeah real. for so, that so, so you locked in you had locked in you know what I'm saying? That that turning point was that was that conversation with Jalen, right? Yeah. And then you ended up leaving and getting drafted. How was how was your experience getting drafted and the time you spent in the NFL? And, you know, where did you get drafted to, all that? Yeah, I think for one man, I think just me being twenty seven now and looking back at me being at the time with twenty two, maybe. Um, not really having the best group of people around me. Um, I think that um just looking back at it now, I don't think I worked hard enough just to stay where I wanted to be. I think I had goals. My goals and aspirations was to get to the NFL, but after that I don't think I, I had any goals. Mm-hmm. Like as far as okay, boom. I done got here. What I'm gonna do next to stay here? Yeah, I don't think that's that's one of the parts that is just as young black man in general, man. We get put so hard for my family, our friends, you know, our peers. To just be successful, you know, accomplish our goals, get there, but nobody else really has any advice on what to do, like to maintain that success because a lot of people ain't been there. Right. And you know. It was a cool process going through the senior bowl, the combine, just getting to do some things that, you know, was definitely on my bucket list. But, you know, just overall, just feeling like the process can be overwhelming. You know how it is. It's a doggy dog. It's a doggy dog business, mm-hmm. it's a straight business. And, you know, I think it's the people that play the longest and get the most success out of either have a good team around them. Or they just autom- they just mentally immature. They mature enough to be able to just focus on what they what it is they're trying to get. But like knowing like knowing like this is an opportunity of a lifetime, right? Yeah. Why do you think you didn't take it serious? Like, is it is it something that happened, or did you just feel like you you was just gonna be able to do be do the same thing like Florida State? It's the same. That's what it is. Like I feel like. Man, just hearing it your whole life and it never really happened. Like I still don't think just as far as athlete wise. Like I always been a better athlete than majority of the people. Even when I got to college, like I don't think I was as assertive as I should have just with my personality, but when it came to being an athlete, like I don't think it was I don't really count myself second to any anybody at that time it was some people faster but just doing some things i can do like i don't think you know dual sport athlete major d1 mm-hmm. college um 
It's a fun fact. Me and Charlie Ward, the only uh, football players in school history to play in the National Championship game and the NCAA tournament in the same year. Oh, that's live. So that's a that's a fact. That's live. Uh, shit like that, man. We, I don't know. I think it's the process. You hit it on the head, like the. I think just having good people in your corner and having goals past the ones that you set, like once you get them, yeah, you know, I think that's that's important for real. And how long? How long you played? How long you played in the league? Two years. Two years. And then he didn't make it to my. Ain't even get vested. <laughs> so, so what happened? Like, obviously, people in your circle know, yeah. but what happened? What led to you? no longer being able to play in the league? I think decisions, man. Just, I'm going to speak on the situation, but five years removed from it, you know, just being an adult, it was things I probably couldn't avoid. I could have avoided. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think me and you had conversations about people like, man, just know how to deal with a macho man, aggression, just, you know. I guess ego and I don't think it was like the situation that happened happened either way um you know I was defending myself but I think just if I would have had a little bit less ego a little bit you know less pride could have could have went a different way but I was in Dallas rookie year it's probably like six seven days for my birthday uh and I'm, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it out just some details just in the case that now I could talk about mm-hmm. uh, that I'm comfortable talking about now. But, you know, happened a few days from my birthday. I'm leaving practice, um, headed to the house. I had made a little pit stop prior to going home. But, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the tollway in Dallas and Frisco. I'm trying to get off, man. This guy just tripping, man, road rage. You know, you got to not only drive for yourself but for other people. So I'm trying to. Get off in the state onto the access road. Long story short, man, man, trying to keep me from getting over. I speed up, get in front of him. I kind of cut him off, but you know, it's not nothing. I just got in front of you, but you want to try to let me over. I got in front of you, you mad because I got in front of you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he behind me, and I can, I'm looking through my rear view. You see the man going crazy, like all out of the car, just tripping. Like, right. You can hear him literally. I got my music up. You can hear this man screaming, like. Over the music. Over the music. And it's all in the affidavit, man. It's it's crazy. I'm still dealing with this shit. Like, the case is dismissed, but just some of the the backlash that came from I'm still dealing with it. So, long story short, I pull off from the light of man following me. I break check him because, nigga, you too close. Like, back up. It ain't that deep. We in traffic. It's rush hour. It's just 4 o'clock. Yeah. You know what's going on. We in traffic. Just deal with it. I'm not trying to cut you off. I ain't like shoot a bird out the window or nothing like that. I just think it's either I'll get over or I'm wrecked mm-hmm. type deal. So he followed me and followed me. I break check him again. So by this time, uh he pull over. I'm driving. I'm in the right lane. He behind me, but he pull over to me while we driving. Like, nigga, I'ma kill you, fuck you, this, this and that. He reaching for his glove compartment. Mm-hmm. Shit like that So you know me At that point You know I'm just Like nigga What you finna do like, Right I'm, finna go. I'm not finna wait For it's, you to Pull nothing out the, Especially at Reaching for the glove box Right Exactly And we in Dallas So I'm thinking You know You know, you got to stand Your ground law You know So I can defend myself For so uh-uh. Pull my fire I don't point it at him But I definitely Let it And we driving Going like 60 miles per hour So this really like Some movie shit Mm-hmm. Uh, let him know, you know, if that's how you wanted to go, that's how I just want to go. Yeah, uh, on the interstate. So you know, he hit on brakes. When she see the gun, he like press on brakes, almost making everybody else behind him hit him. He get behind me and start following me to my house. Mm-hmm. So you know, and mind you, at the time, you know, it's a female in the car. I don't know the girl though. Now the details is gonna make it funny. Uh huh. So. I don't know the girl anyways, boom, follow me to the crib, you know, I hop out, she hop out, this man parked behind me, I walk right past him, like, 
just like, you know, I should still off on his ass for doing all this extra shit, which I already knew what was finna. And in my head, I'm smart. I'm like, okay, boom. Because people was like, why you just didn't try to run and get away from the dude? I'm like, because he already knew he was going to call the police. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what they do. They antagonize you and they go try to get you called along. You tight shit. So I'm like, boom, I'm going to go home. And they was like, well, why would you go where you stay? I'm like, man, at that point. I'm thinking like I know he calling the police. He probably telling them the scripts on my car. The worst thing that can happen is the police, you know, pull up on me or try to stop me. And you know, like on some like why are you running like yeah. some shit like that and just it escalated. They, they could have been five ten. They, he could have called and was like, hey, I'm armed and dangerous. It could have been any type of situation. So I'm like at this point, it's safest that I go home. I know they coming. Mm -hmm. So me and, me and the chick, we go upstairs. Um, mind you, I'm probably a little tipsy too. I had a stock, got me a drink if I had even got home. I got you. Um, just wildly. But anyways, police pull up. They pull up like eight deep. Mm -hmm. I'm watching it because I stay, we stay, I stay in these condos. So I could see everything, but nobody could see me. So I'm seeing them. I tell the chick like, man, just chill right here. I'm finna go down. So shit, I walk down that bitch. I had no shirt on. Then I walk down, introduce myself to the officers, like, hey, you know, I'm the guy that was involved in the incident. This what happened. This what he did. And, you know, I ain't had no reason. I don't really have no reason, like, to lie like, mm -hmm. about the situation. He was doing too much. Yeah. Um, let them know what happened. Um, they investigated it. Just on scene, on the scene, they investigated, got their police report. Um, they ended up coming upstairs, one of the get the weapons or whatever i'm like cool i'm cooperating i don't have like i've told y'all yo i put my i brandish my i brandish my fire or my gun on him because he called me a nigga said he was gonna kill me he reaching for whatever like and this was on this is on the interstate it's on the interstate so you man. show you showed him you yes. showed him the gun on the interstate and in traffic or get to him in traffic like this was i ain't no i ain't trying to portray to be nobody but you know it's just certain shit I stand on, man. I mean, I'm not go, I'm not gonna wait for nobody to take my life. Man. Yeah, that's just what it is. If you, if you, if you could go back into that moment, would you have done? Especially knowing that's what got you kicked out of the league. I'm would you have driving. done? I'm driving. I don't even give a fuck. What are you talking about? Like, yeah. So you would do things different. It's that's that's my question. Yeah. Totally, totally. But that's that ego, man. You young. You got got some money. A little bit of success. Right. You know, you, smelling yourself can't nobody really and it's crazy a lot of us deal with that like and you know the people that what i've learned bro the people that last the longest really be you know you have some hot head niggas but the niggas that be humble like they really just live like they not living for the success that they have and the money they just enjoy playing football mm -hmm. like you know certain people so. but i mean a lot of people get a lot of people get into situations in the league and get a lot of second chances too Second, third, fourth, and fifth chances. I think it was you know. my. I think it was where I was at too, bro. I what think you mean? Just with the Cowboys, uh, America's team. So many, so many, man. I could get into some shit, bro. Like just being in that organization for two years and just seeing how they conduct business. Mm -hmm. It's. It can be the NFL can be a whole bunch. It's that like a lot of the things that people complain about, like. You know, the athletes talking about discrimination and shit like that. That shit actually go on yeah. in the NFL. And that's um, that's actually that's actually something that I definitely want to talk about as far as like discrimination and in, in, in the NFL because as you know, we got, you know, the Brian Flores situation. Hmm. You know It's real, man. It's real. You know, like they bought the Cowboys. I was there with the Cowboys when they Decimated that man, Des Des Bryant, his character. Uh huh. Man, it was. Uh, and at this point, I know he don't even give a fuck. But you know, uh, they felt the way because of how adamant he felt about the Black Lives Matter shit. Mm. And it was crazy. Like this is when we played on Monday Night Football against the Cardinals. So you remember. It's talking about the whole kneeling controversy thing. Yeah, you know Jerry Jones got the uh, got us to kneel, got him to kneel 
before the national anthem and then when the national anthem came on stand up and like lock on right? right and you know he wasn't going for that it just didn't make sense yeah like, they tried to do it but that wasn't the plan that wasn't like the plan like throughout the week throughout the week was you know you could express your no they wanted jerry jones like if you stand if you kneel you out the team you out the team right but so many people there was so much controversy going on that it was just like he had to figure out how to you got to do something mm-hmm. to satisfy both sides yeah and you know once they did they said a lot of players was confused on the R with the team was just off and you know we had a team meeting like that monday coach garrett you know it's like hey you know there's a lot of controversy around it you know the shit that's going on george floyd. i don't even was it george floyd there was probably something else going on then but just the protesting and kneeling, you know, we just want to open up a forum for people to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Granted, niggas like me, even if I felt the way, I, it was just I'm not gonna say nothing. Like, right. That's for one, it ain't my place. Yeah. And I like I like my job. Right. Right. Now. So I don't give a fuck that much. But you know, niggas like Des, um, Byron Jones is in there. Um, you know, Byron Jones' dad was. He's like a decorated um, military um, personnel, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so he got a whole different perspective. Even my dad was military. Um, but they was just got up and spoke about just how they felt like, you know, Cowboys wasn't defending the people in the, in their room. Yeah. Um, I think it's I, I think it's crazy how like um the people in the military I mean, obviously, you got people on both sides, but, like, a lot of people in the military support it. Right. You know, people kneeling or whatever it is, you know. So, and then here we go with the, with this uh, Rooney rule. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's that's obviously just a check. Like, it's not, not like a check like money, but, like, it's, it's like, all box. right, it's check the box. Yeah. All right, now let's let's look for who we really want. Exactly. I think it's crazy. I think that's crazy how, you know, all that's going on. But uh but how was it how was it playing in Dallas as far as, you know, cuz I I played for Tampa, I played for Carolina. So like the, you know, the ownership was kind of different. The like I barely oh, seen the owners in Tampa in Carolina the uh uh, our owner, he he came around a little bit more, but you played for America's team. You played for Dallas, like Hollywood, everything top of the line. Just what we ate, our facilities, and I didn't. I wasn't there. You know, they had the old Cowboys facility for years, mm-hmm. and then they called where the star is located. I think it's like on two or three miles, um, and they call it like the billion dollar mile. They call it the billion dollar mile. The billion dollar. That's mile. like a. That's like a. Cause all that like shit, a man. like a little little town kind of. It's, it's in Frisco, but the star is the Cowboys headquarters. Mm-hmm. So that's what you practice at. They do all the media. It's just huge, bro. It's a whole mile, just a block of. You got the Omni Frisco Hotel. You got the um, the star. You got Cowboys fit. You got clubs. Jerry Jones has got that shit just laid out. It's, some it's a lot shit. of. It. And you talking about not seeing the owners, but literally. We would have to, they would have to stop practice because this man coming in on a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> All the fucking dummies around, footballs flying. And no. Shit. Papers, the coach's papers flying out the hands and shit. That's a movie. That's, hey. That nigga, how about that, bitch? How about with whoever he with? Yeah. You know, stroll right in the building and the helicopter just take off. <laughs> middle of practice. Like, in the middle of practice, Jay Jones pulling up. Helicopter. No, quick like pulling up Hellcat Valet, like <laughs> on you gotta stop practice for five, five, ten minutes. Move it down, move it down. That's crazy. Move it down, nigga, blowing the dummies and shit. That man preparing for the Super Bowl at practice, huh? That's his Super Bowl appearance. Everything, bro, everything. <laughs> but it's just like it's crazy how I do believe in just divine intervention. I feel like you know, I was working out in at Michael Johnson in Frisco or in Dallas the mm-hmm. training facility and it's crazy bro it's almost like I feel like they was maybe watching me which I feel like they was it was probably scout you know, had somebody in the scout who we had in the stadium because our last 
you know, you do the mock combines and shit. Mm -hmm. Our last one was in Dallas, it was in AT and T Stadium mm -hmm. because they wanted to give us a pro feel, like for the combine for the guys yeah. going to the combine. We, you know, the combine was in Indy mm -hmm. at the Colts Stadium, so they wanted to give us a pro feel, like indoor turf with the light, light and shit. Yeah, and it's crazy. You know, my last workout at before I ever got drafted. Um, was in that stadium, mm. and you know I ended up getting a call from them, and that's whole. That's just a whole. If you're able to go through that process and be able to get that call, man, because uh, I know a lot of my people didn't, but that's still like you. But he still has successful careers. Um, but I think going back to school my junior year, because I probably should have came out my junior year. Had a really good year. Um, went back my senior year. I think I don't think I played bad. I don't think I played any better than I did my junior year. And I think it was other people in my class that was just fine. Yeah. Like, and you know, yeah. Troy Smith told me to go back to school because the next year class wasn't as talented. Same, yeah. And that shit ended up being the most one of the most talented classes like in the past ten years. Jeez. Lattimore, Humphrey. Uh, everybody that came out in that class, put it yeah, like that. Like yeah. everybody was dropping four threes. Like, I get that was Jalen class, right? Jalen came out the year before me. He came. Oh yeah, but me and Jalen like, came out the same year. You're right. Me, it was him. It was us. Lattimore, Jordan, Jordan Lewis was in that class. Uh, Cheeto Bell, Woozy, A, them all. Like it was that class was loaded, bro. Yeah, like, a lot of. Yeah. A lot of them boys they start pro no. ball like Yeah. So so I want I wanted to kinda kinda move forward in the conversation, right? Yeah. So you um your mindset and your transition from being not the like you're no longer playing football, right? You just got into the incident where, you know, what happened on the interstate and now you transitioning in life, you know, football is gone. And then you ended up starting a food truck business. One, how did you get to where you at now in terms of one picking to do food trucks? Like, why did you pick the food truck? And how was your mind transitioning out of the NFL? Like, mentally, was it draining? Was it exhausting? Was it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, a lot of people go through it yeah. when they no longer, when they realize they're no longer playing football. I think just that situation and how that situation went, just, you know, me getting in that incident and seeing how people label you, man. The NFL love to put labels on people. Mm -hmm. Like, label people, you know, shitheads or bad, bad kids, bad young men. Uh, you know me. I ain't never. That ain't me. Like, and just what it did to me, just knowing that, because I feel like, man, it's this weird thing, man. People, certain groups of people have have they have ways of preying on things that people like really work hard for. Mm -hmm. Like so, you know, the NFL that was a goal. That's something I wanted to get to. Once it didn't work out, I had to figure out. You know, I had to really totally reinvent myself. Um, I think I stopped loving the game. I just fell out of love with the game just when it became a business. Just mm -hmm. my whole life I had only played like I would play that shit for free. Like, but you know, you get you see the business side of it and it's like, damn man, I'm just trying to get my money. Like, yeah. And stay healthy. And, yeah. And get in and get out. And uh it didn't work out that way. So when I got cut, you know, I'm going through the legal process. Um, which I was facing like ten years for the charge. They don't play by shit in Dallas, like mm -hmm. in Texas, is with the law. So not for real. I was already facing that shit. You know, had a relationship that I was in that wasn't, you know, doing the best at the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, just ultimately, you know, finances is a huge thing. And when you're not, it's cool. It's a lot of it's cool to be the guy that used to play for the Cowboys or whatever, but that shit not paying no, that you not making no money, right? And bills still gotta get paid, you know. You still gotta survive, and I wanted to find something that 
Nobody else could. I didn't want to be able to get fired again. Ever. Never want to get fired again. And yeah. And I took every do- last dollar I had and put it in the food truck. Like Every last dollar. Every last dollar, bro. I'm going to tell you a story, bro. Oh, God. I remember buying like a deep fryer. The deep fryer was a lot, one of the last things. And this is before my shit was even nice, like, like where it is now. This mm-hmm. is just like the bare minimum. I bought it, spent like my last $237. On a deep fire, and this is me trying to do shit the right way, just yeah. cause a bunch of shit niggas get in. Like mm-hmm. then I just, I'm like, man, I'm a, if that's what I gotta do, you know, I make it happen. But I want to try something different. Like it's cool. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to go the hard route. Yeah. Um, bought, spent the money on the fire, man. Didn't know how to cook. Didn't know how to light a fire for real. Nothing like that. Lit that bitch, no grease in that bitch, with no grease in it, and that bitch lit on fire. So I had to borrow some money <laughs> from my, literally had to borrow some money from my granddad to go like, granddad, can you please buy this fire? Yeah. Need the money back. And just, this was probably what, 2019? And niggas act, niggas can act like they don't, and you done been the lead, bro. I know you, you, you different, but you know, you go spend the money, like, Regardless of niggas, like how you make money and be broke, nigga, you just go happen. Like the more money you make, the more money you'll spend. Right, type shit. So, um, end up just ever since that day, man, buying really buying and flipping it. Like I felt like I, it's the same. I use the same process that a dope boy use. Like buy low, sell high, try to control the market, mm-hmm. control everything. Uh, good product, word of mouth marketing, you know, shit like that. It's just different. Yeah. Uh, now you now you got one of the the best food truck in the Dothan area. Yeah, man. I just Dothan. I feel like for one, I'm the youngest food owner, food truck owner in the state. Mm-hmm. Like by some years. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like the brand. Goat Wings, that's the name of my food truck. Follow me on social on any of my social medias at Goat Wings Food Truck. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We do numbers on Facebook. Um Yes, sir. But just I use that same mindset, man. That same focus, like attention to detail. And you know, like I was telling you yesterday, this is the hardest I ever worked. Like, this is the most stress. Like nigga be having anxiety, all this shit. Just by yeah. my business, like, cause I wanna be the best, like five years from now, uh, and what's your podcast? What you want it to be? I want my business to be. I want you to be able to bring me in. And I got like, you know, I'm on my Rick Ross shit. I got 10, 15 food trucks pulling up in a G wagon, just going in and getting a 10 piece. Just don't, just don't uh, say you got to go to the bathroom Sorry. and take your jacket off and then don't right ever back. come back. <laughs> hey, right. <laughs> For life, but hey. <laughs> that nigga said, I'm riding the wheel. That nigga said, that nigga, like, hey, bro, get the car ready, bro. All right, you outside. All right, but I'm about to come. Hey. That nigga said, for life. But, but you said something that you said something that stuck out to me because, honestly, bro, like, I tip my hat off to you for that, but, like, how is it that you said that? How did you say it? Correct me if I'm wrong. You said you worked way more harder yeah. doing this food truck business than you ever did playing football. Like, it was, it was crazy. is this like what? Is this a passion? Is is this your passion? Is this your passion more than football? Man, people, man. I had a high school football coach ask me, man, what's your why? No, he was like, who are you? Mm-hmm. And this is when I was playing ball. Like, I could not answer who I was, bro, like, outside of a football player and me being a dad. But I feel like the hand I was dealt, um, I really found out who I was, like, how far i go. Like, because you got to think, bro, this is really my last opportunity. I'm either doing fraud, Selling dope, or I'm having to get a real job. Nah, nah shit. for real, yeah. Real shit. Nah. Like, so that's how it go. Like, yeah. And I'm like, man, you know, I can't be 
Because I know it's a lot of guys I have to do it. But for myself, I just didn't. I'm too smart, too good with my, like, able to think myself out of situations. Like, mm -hmm. And what I've learned, bro, if that's your only option, you'll figure that shit out. Right. Like, if you like that, like, that's what anything I feel like I could. Ain't no plan B. Ain't no plan B. I put it all in one basket. <laughs> like, literally. And then, nah, for real. And you talking about growth, bro. You talking about sin. And you will get a chance to see it with what you're doing now. Like, this, and we starting small. This is your second one. Like, but just mm -hmm. having something, bro. And you so fucking sensitive. But I'm sensitive as fuck about what I'm doing. So, yeah. Every view from a customer, any bad. And that's the growth that I made the most in my business is just being able to not take shit so personal because of how I naturally, I'm competitive as fuck. Like, yeah. Why you don't like my shit? Right. <laughs> And that's how, and that's how, and that's how it is in football, bro. Like a lot of people don't know. Like that's why, that's why, that's why, like that's why I can't wrap my head around how you work so, so much harder doing this versus in football, because like, and but I see where you get that from. Like I relate to you on that because in the, in the football in the meeting room, bro. Like what a lot of people don't know is. Bro, you might watch the same play rewinding it over and over with a red dot pointing at you, critiquing you for a couple minutes straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, them film sessions is like that. So, like, your film session now is no longer how you coming out this break or how, you know what I'm saying, you got this person may have beat you on a route. Your film session is food reviews. Mm -hmm. Your film session is, like, your film session is your film session could be how you posting your pictures on Facebook exactly. or or Instagram. You know what I'm saying? So I think one, I think it's dope. I'm definitely proud of you and where you at and what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? Definitely happy for you for where you at. But um, that's time to have a little fun. Let's do it. It's time to have a little fun, man. So Let's do it. we gotta have we got some questions. We got some questions that was sent in from 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 a few from a few people that are interested in what we got to say on some things you know i get really really great relationship advice <laughs> i'm a scorpio october scorpio so scorpio's october october scorpio is the best 10 17 so let's get straight to it do all women and men go through a whole phase. Mm. I don't know, but I done met some good girls that I don't even think know about sex. Like they don't not know about sex, but it's like they not on that. Like right. they ain't never, they may have three bodies, like whole life. That don't mean they don't know about sex. I ain't I ain't okay, yeah. Not that they don't know about sex. <laughs> but I'm saying that's they ain't no whole either. Like Right, no, it, I'm not saying that's a whole, but like you know I'm what saying? Just, you can you can have three bodies, but you know what I'm saying? You can be wild. I wouldn't say be wild, but you know, have a lot of quantity and quality, you know, like you know. Still I I get what you say. I'm saying like cuz you ask the question that every man or woman go through a whole phase. Yeah. I think it just depends, man, really what you want to call being a hoe. Like true. If you dating like if you dating, if you dating somebody, but you date a lot and you feel like, oh, you have to date a person to have sex with them, but mm -hmm. you got a new person every month, man, that's 10 bodies in a year. Like, mm -hmm. are you considered a hoe? Like, because you just date? Like, is you a hoe if you dating these, you actually genuinely dating these people for a month, two months at a time, and you sleeping with them, and then... Mm -hmm. On to the next person Like are you a hoe Like or What's the definition Is What's the definition Of a hoe You're right What's the definition Of a hoe I think As far as the whole phase go I think About 97% Of people Go through a whole phase Bro because You gotta think A whole phase Is different For everybody mm -hmm. So like You might just You might just you might just leave high school, you might get to college, and you might just kind of like, 
wild out a little bit. Your freshman, first, sophomore year. First freedom. First, you, have. you know what I'm saying? First freedom. That's more like some that's some female shit. That's what women do. I feel like. So what's, what do dudes do? Because we already, most niggas been wilding since high school. Niggas been wilding. Like, so that's <laughs> all right. So so that leads to school, that yeah. leads to my next question because y- not you specifically, but like as an athlete, you've been exposed to some things. Yeah. So I think I was like, what somebody told me, it would make sense to me is lifestyle versus phase. You feel me? Like yeah. us being us get us jumping off the porch early. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we get to college. It's coming at, you know it's what I'm saying? Lifestyle. It's it's a lifestyle like right. like even like we can choose to walk away from that lifestyle, right? Right. But at the end of the day, we have to turn it down versus like seek it. Mm-hmm. So like I feel like a I feel like a phase is where it's like I'm going to I'm going to um I'm just going to let my hair down. I'm just going to have fun. I'm just gonna have fun, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I just my my whoever yeah. that person is Doing might have just got out of a relationship. They might have just got out of a relationship and they trying to have fun. They ain't right. trying to, you know, what for whatever reason. So I think that's I think that's more of a phase versus like versus oh, like saw. us or like as an athlete, it's mm-hmm. like a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Versus and like the temptation is real. It's always there. You feel me? So, I don't know. It's kind of like, for us, we more so have to, like, turn it down versus, like, go out and chase it. Yeah, I think it's also at the same time, it's how available you make yourself to, how approachable you make yourself. Like, I was thinking about, I'm like, you know, I know women. Like, it's a bad, it's a lot of bossed up, beautiful women uh, that probably don't get approached as much just because of the way that they carry they self. Like, mm-hmm. So niggas, you go and scroll on Instagram, you see a bit, you know, in a business leisure suit, you know, she bossed out, she got businesses, you know, you go you go approach her differently than, or you may not even approach her because most men be intimidated, you know, by a woman. A lot of women do, but, you know, you might not even approach her versus a woman. Got an ass out in every picture. Yeah. That's just like, her DMs may she may have a thousand DMs versus this other lady that really probably look better, dress better, got more going on, but she don't make herself approachable mm-hmm. for whatever reason. She don't, and some men just go go approach her just because they're intrigued by women like that. But I think I'm talking about the whole phase, man. I think it's it's just really what you want to do. Yeah, you know, really where you at? We shit. So this my this this the last this the last thing I'm gonna ask you. Do you see yourself getting married? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely the lover boy type. I feel like you have like, as long as I know you, I haven't really known you've been in a relationship more than I know you be single. I ain't never been. But the thing is, I've only been in two relationships since you know me. I ain't never like. I've dated long term. Mm-hmm. Like, all my relationship, shit, my, I lost my virginity when I was 14. I think I dated her for like three years. Mm-hmm. Like, my baby mama, we dated. We weren't together a long time. But, you know, my ex, we was together, what, five years? Current relationship, three, almost three. So, you know, I ain't really had a whole bunch of girlfriends that I, like, cuffed type shit so I definitely see myself being a stay at home dad my girl retired me early and my wife retired me early at some point but definitely man that's the goal I don't think I just don't have a time limit on it like I don't have a obviously I'm not like Cam Newton finna whoa Sorry, we talking about the podcast. I'm not talking about Cam. I'm talking about his shout out his, to Cam, man. What you got I'm going on, about, yo? Like, what you got going on? <laughs> he got very good perspective, but I'm saying it's better than he, at least he open like with his views. Uh-huh. Like, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm telling you that I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the same views as him. Like, you know, 
in that situation. Respectfully though. Yo, Respectfully. That's, it's just different. Like everybody got their own opinions on things. It's niggas that, you know, it's niggas that, you know, meet people meet, get married. And this is what women say, like, can't oh, this person met got married in four months. This person met got met got married in eight months. Like you never know. Like mm-hmm. every situation is different, man. Like I know people that's got kids like my age, like my homeboy's parents, like have never been married. Yeah. Like, but the way the law work, like you stay together a certain amount of years. You already married. married. Yeah. <laughs> like you get. All I think the it's like seven years in Florida, yes. Yes. something like that. Cause Cause my sick. my grandma went. My grandma was like that. She she was together with my granddad for a long time, and they got married. They probably they was probably only married like a. I don't know, probably like a few, like, I don't even, maybe not even 10 years, bro, if that, but they was together for like, for a long time, just since like the 80s. It's the values, bro, it's like, the family structure, what women see, mm-hmm. what men see, like me, I didn't see a healthy relationship between my parents growing up, so my, my whole perspective Oh, marriage is kind of different, but that doesn't. Is is that what make you want want to get married? You want to have something that you didn't, you never seen. That that's why. Um, yeah, definitely want to do that. And uh, I just think it's just legacy, man. You think about people that you love. We all gotta leave one day, and even though we don't want to, but it's just leaving you know my last name you know hopefully some kids here and there and just doing it the right way i i think that everybody got their own religion and things that they they go through but you know the only healthy marriage i saw was really my grandparents and they was married 52 years Mm. and that's live you know i think uh i think for me for me bro it's been like one to answer the, the original question yes i definitely see i definitely would like to get married one day and see myself getting married one day. But like, when we talk about relationships, it's been the opposite. Yeah. Like, you've always been in a relationship. Right. I've always been single. Since I know you ain't. <laughs> God damn. I'm like, I ain't even met that nigga ain't never. But you know what though? I feel like that's what keep us friends. Like we both got like, we got similar views, but we both got like just how we like shit we do different. Like I've literally never I don't even know, man. You might be scared of commitment. I got in a relationship uh But you 20... scared of commitment though. I'm not You bro. don't wanna do you don't I'm gonna tell you dog. You don't you not scared of commitment, but you also know your worth. So a nigga that know his worth not, not gonna settle with nothing. I'm not gonna it. settle. You're not dealing with nothing. So it's like that but you know that's how it is for women like that's the standards women got now like the bosses the women that's getting money they like shit and i'm not bosses sorry. yeah nice so what you how you carry yourself you know and i'm gonna add a question mm-hmm. to the thing when you get done i got a question man all right so all right so uh ah oh, dang i was gonna say something about um okay you said i was afraid of commitment right I don't think I'm afraid of commitment. I think before I was, especially in college, yeah. I was only at Florida State for two years. You know what I'm saying? I, I was focused on getting my scholarship. I was focused on getting to the league. Yeah. You feel me? Having fun. Let's just be real. Uh, and then I get to the league. I'm focusing on making a team. I'm focusing on starting. I'm focusing on getting on the field like and having fun casually. But like, mm-hmm. really, bro, like, I wasn't necessarily a. I was. I guess if it boils down to it, yeah, I was afraid of commitment because I was afraid of picking the wrong one. I was. I was always afraid of picking the wrong one, and honestly, bro, our world is so small. It's like everybody know everybody. Everybody know everybody, and you don't want and although it ain't necessarily about body count. You don't want nobody. It's the bodies you, that count. Yeah. It's you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I ain't counting the bodies, but it's like which bodies. Yeah, you don't fuck my dog. This name you don't smash the homies, yeah. like and like. I'm gonna be real, bro. I told you this yesterday, bro. I don't let some good girls slide. Like 
they like they i had walked away from some good girls because like i really felt like they was wife and material but they don't smash they don't smash the homies can't do it can't do it but you know that's crazy because like <laughs> you can't it's just tough bro because you know how niggas think women think different than men you know niggas go think in the back of their head the whole time that's your dog but i gonna splat that shit easy like that's how you thinking that's like, how they thinking every time so that's like, how they thinking eat. versus women women also sit like oh bitch you want good enough to keep him. i got him now that's my nigga. like if he ain't shit, this my ain't shit, nigga. Yeah. versus niggas like but you done they got video niggas recorded she got it all in the phone man, like it's over man. with that's definitely that's definitely a, a great podcast episode talking about those type of things but to put it out there I'm definitely not afraid. Mentally, I'm at a different place now. I'm at a place mentally now where it's like, I done grown, I have grown, I've evolved, I've done, I, I you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've read books, I watch a lot of podcasts, you feel me? My last relationship taught me, and then I put it like this, I learned a lot from my last relationship and what not to do. Right. So. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm in a great place to definitely settle down. Um, well, what was your question? You said you had this a question. This is my question. I'm going to put it out there. Let me see my little video. This is my question. So, it's 2022. Who is the prize? Men or women? Who's the prize? And who's, who's the prize? Men or women? And why? I think... I don't think it's I don't think it's one one gender that's a prize. I feel like I feel like I'm going into a situation, I'm looking at it like, hey, I am I'm I'm a prize. You know what I'm saying? I don't wanna sit here and say like I'm the prize and you not the prize. You feel me? Because that's like real. at the end of the day, people will say it's a blessing to find a good wife or a you know what I'm saying, they will say that's a gift. Right. You feel me? Like so I ain't gonna just sit here and say, Oh, I'm the prize and you gotta no, I feel like shoot. I feel like if you, if you confident in yourself, and you confident, and you know what you're gonna bring to the table, then you're gonna help that person get better. So, right. I wouldn't just sit here and say one person is the prize. I would definitely say that the way you value yourself, if you value yourself high enough, you'll know that you're a prize. Right. What's your take on it? I think that. Um, she can go both ways. I think I was just my views has grown on it. I just think kind of like you know since men are just oh since men are outnumbered by women two to one, I think that make it just the the rarity of it. Um, it's just harder to find just for women, and then I think overall it's kind of easier for men to find women. Well, not to find women to play the part, but for the woman to meet for man to meet a woman and she's submissive versus the other way around mm-hmm. so it's easier for a man to go out and find a woman that'll come home and clean and cook if the man got a kid then you know maybe look at this kid every now and then this but we th- we you gotta remember it's 2022 every female ain't trying to cook and clean so every female not that though. that that might not even be Surprise. That might even, you know what I'm saying? She gonna, you know what I'm saying? Nowadays, that women can't. You feel a lot me? of women can't do it. That's why they don't want to. That, we, well, we, you know, we was raised differently. You know, like, you know, the females in my family, or the females that I know, may not be raised in the kitchen like our aunties and our grandma was. Thanksgiving is gonna be a. Uh, it's gonna be virtual in a few years. It's gonna be in the metaverse. They're not even gonna be cooking no more. I believe, and they're selling real estate <laughs> on that for two hundred thousand prop. Like, yeah, and it's crazy. <laughs> That's some shit to get on, man. But hey, appreciate you, my dog. Yes, sir. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up, man. Hit the pass. Definitely appreciate you for coming through. The game. You man. know what I'm saying? All love, my boy. Hard to handle podcast. Don't got a name for the show yet, <laughs> but hey. That's the name of the show. Don't got a name. We're going to get it going, though.